welcome to the MLB Coast to Coast podcast brought to you by thelines.com. Coming to you from the West Coast, Josh Lander flying solo once more here on the MLB Coast to Coast podcast. Episode number two in the first episode that we kicked off on Friday as we came back from that all-star break. Nice little 2-0 and number there. I did offer three picks out, but Tyler Glass now and the Rays got uh, postponed till the next day, so that bet canceled. But Ross Stripling went under two and a half earned runs because he only pitched about four innings in that game. Uh, Matt Olson on the Braves continues to just wreak havoc. Over two and a half hits, runs, and RBIs combined. Also got that when he hit a huge jack in the first inning uh, and got, I believe, a three-run home run right off the bat to just go ahead and seal the deal on that bet within about 30 minutes. Uh, since the, uh, from the time that first pitch happened there in that game, so love to see that for him. Uh, also, did get a little bit of a parlay in there that I don't I spoke about, but I didn't give you guys directly with the Rays and the Braves uh, both winning their first games of the series. So right now, two and zero plus one point nine two units on the season. Hope to keep that going for you guys. Do want to mention that you should like and subscribe to this page. Continue to follow along with me and Nate as soon as he's back here in a couple of weeks. And he'll be joining me on these MLB Coast to Coast player prop uh, specifically podcast that we're doing here. Also want you to head to thelines.com and check out everything we're putting up on the site this summer as we move on. Also have the odds finder tool on there that you can use to make sure you're getting the best odds available to you. As always, with all these player props or MLB bets that you're making this season. So let's jump into my first pick for today, Monday, July 17th. We've got Ellie De La Cruz, and I'm starting things off with Ellie to get a stolen base and it's plus money. And it's something that, you know, it, it's one of these batting props, if you will, that, that I don't always love taking, but this is a really good situation uh, for a guy who's just blazing fast and continues to get stolen bases pretty much every game. I mean, if he gets on base, the likelihood that he's getting a stolen base at this point is pretty high. And I think you can bank on him getting on base uh, with Logan Webb starting for the Giants. I think this is a pretty good matchup for him to not only get on base uh, because of the fact that, I should say, not only get a stolen base, but just you know get on base because of the fact that Logan Webb's looking to keep things low. Uh, Ellie De La Cruz, if the ball is on the ground and he's running towards first base, it's going to be a close play uh, or he's going to be safe most of the time because there's really nowhere he could hit the ball on the ground that he can't outrun that ball to first base. Um, he's been doing a great job of hitting it to the other side as well and just slapping it down the third baseline uh, when he's when he's facing righties from the left side of the plate. So uh, the, the Ray and the Reds are just a team that are going to continue to send guys. Uh, I should mention the plus 182 on FanDuel is really good uh, compared to plus 165 on DraftKings and everywhere else it's like plus 155. So I really like the fact that you could still get that really good number on FanDuel at plus 182. Uh, should still be there as I'm recording this for you guys and we'll get this up pretty soon. Like I was saying though, the Reds, 55 stolen bases since Ellie joined the team and they're just, they're sending guys, man. Like they've got the most attempts and as a result, they've also got the most stolen bases. They, they've got one more than, uh, I want to say the Astros, Astros or the Rays. I got to look at it again, but they're in first, uh, one above that team. Um, and the, since he's joined the team, they're far and away the best uh, team at stealing bases, 17 more than the second team, uh, second place team at this point since that time. Uh, Logan Webb's been really good. Look, he, he's back in form this year. I don't want to talk trash on him and his ability to, to win this game for the Gigantes. He's back to not walking guys, to striking guys out with, with really nasty low stuff that's moving. Um, he's not giving up home runs because his ball is super heavy right now with that sinker being his, his primary sort of uh, close it out pitch. Um, and he's also sixth in K per nine versus, and this is all among qualified pitchers. I, I put in uh, at least 100 innings pitched right now for, for the, the stats that I'm talking about for Logan Webb. But he's still allowed a ton of stolen bases, 41 of 55 attempts since he's been a, a starter in the league. That's his career number there. The Giants overall are in the bottom uh, percentile, bottom half of the league, I should say, when it comes to allowing steals. So people know, you know, teams know they can run on them. Uh, so at plus 182, I'm going to take one, at least a stolen base here for Ellie De La Cruz uh, in, tonight, in today's game against the Giants. Uh, next game I'm going to is the Rangers and the Tampa Bay Rays. And I'm kind of fading Shane McClanahan a bit. Um, it, it's I'm really I'm I'm kind of fading both pitchers if we're being honest. I, I do think there's some value on Texas first five money line at even money, um, quarter of a unit on that. And and really what I want to talk a little bit more about is how both pitchers probably can be faded a bit in terms of the first five total. Uh, over four and a half, which the best number I could get minus 140 on FanDuel at over four and a half. 
if you want to uh, just get rid of that little hook there and, and make it five on DraftKings, it, it, the, the total is at five even, uh, and you can get that a, closer to even money than the minus 140 on FanDuel. But I like the idea of, of get, getting the, the hook there with the five over four and a half, getting minus 140 for, for that. I'll take it. And like I was saying with Shane, he left his last start on June 30th, uh, so about two and a half weeks ago. Hasn't been back since then with, with that back issue. Um, and, and so now he's coming back for the first time out and I just, you can't even get an outs prop for him as a result because I don't, we don't know how long he's necessarily going to go. Th this first five isn't necessarily this whole over the, uh, on the first five isn't necessarily just because I think he's going to get rocked. I, I, I think he's going to get taken out pretty early either way, maybe four innings in this game, even if he is pitching decently, just because why would you risk it if, if he's pitching just decently? You don't need this game that bad right now as they sit atop the AL East. So I think there's going to be some leeway to keep him out of the game. There's going to be a short leash, I just should say, on McClanahan, regardless of how he's pitching. But he also started to dip a bit in, in decline before he got hurt officially in that June 30th start. Um, and if you compare his, his previous five starts in June to when he th that game that he left, his strikeout rate dipped dramatically. It was 29% on the season over his first 12 starts. And then over his last five, it dipped down to below 18% for that stri strikeout rate. And it hasn't actually gone above 22% uh, in any of those outings in June either. So there, there is some... some uh, I'm, I'm talking myself further into the under 5.5 Ks for McClanahan just because I don't think he'll have the opportunity to, uh, to get out, out there long enough. So let me do that, honestly. Like, I'm going to replace the Texas <laughs> first five money line bet. And, and whatever, you know, all these bets are fine by me. I mean, they're, they're sort of likely. But now that the five and a half strikeouts is something that he's just not doing anyway, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put it in here so that Jack can put it up on the screen for you guys that I'm going under five and a half Ks for McClanahan because he just won't be in there long enough necessarily. Like, his stuff has dropped, his velocity has dropped, and I just don't think you can expect his velocity to come back up to what it was in his in those first 12 starts over the first couple months of the season the coming back from an injury like that so going going more into the the over for the the first five though we also got to talk about dane dunning and i love dane dunning uh i'm sure i've spoken about him at, at numerous places because of the fact that he's on my fantasy team so i'm probably just bothering people with that information consistently because he's been incredible since then and i've overvalued him because he did have an outing where he had 10 k's against a struggling squad but Moving forward, like he's going to be, you know, taking on a, a raised lineup that just crushes right-handed pitching. Number one, really, in the league when you look at one, a 121, 122, really, WRC plus for this team. Um, weighted runs counted. And, and there, you know, look, Dane Dunning's ex-ERA is 4.72. His ERA is 2.4. Huge part of that. His BABIP is is two six is two sixty eight. I mean, a, a lot of these uh, these Texas Rangers pitchers have really really good BABIPs uh, because of the fact that they have such a good defense behind them. Seventy seven point eight percent left on base there with that stranded rate, meaning that you know he's getting he's pitching well out of the stretch and that's great. But you don't want to continue to force that. His th his six and a half percent home run to fly ball rate is basically third luckiest in the league, um, especially when you look at what he's done over his career. In his career, we're talking about 304 BABIP and a 12.5% home run to fly ball rate. If those things just regress a little bit back to the mean, you know, against a Rays team that, like I said, is crushing this hitting and doesn't strike out and probably won't strike out against Dane Dunning, who has the second fewest Ks per nine among all pitchers with at least 80 innings pitched because he's just he's trying to get you out on the ground. Uh, he's trying to keep that ball low. And if it gets up, then he's going to be in trouble. And, and there could be an opportunity for that here. So that's where I go for the, the over. But I'm really it's interesting because my favorite bet was the over four and a half before I started talking. And it just kept going through my stats and was like, wait a second. If McClanahan's going to pitch four innings and he needs six Ks without velocity, he's already down to a sub 18 percent K rate, like I said, in June probably more likely he's going to continue along those lines. So I'll go ahead and take the under five and a half Ks as an equally confident bet uh, to that first five over four and a half for this game as a whole. Let's finish things off briefly. I don't need to go too far into Jesus Lazardo. I've just been wildly impressed with him. Um, his, he's sort of climbed the ranks of these Marlins pitchers who continue to be impressive. And he's taken on the Cardinals which means there's an opportunity for strikeouts, and he has been a strikeout pitcher. Uh, over 6.5 Ks for him is plus 115 on DraftKings. I'm throwing .2 units on it there. Not going crazy. I, I do get the plus money, and, and I just wanted to have a little bit of juice on, on this game that it starts at 4 p.m. on the East Coast. 
Look at his last five for Lazardo. 1.14 ERA, 40 Ks in just 31.2 innings. That is ridiculous. Uh, he's gone over six and a half in nine of his last 11 starts. Um, he's getting a, nearly a 28% whiff rate. Uh, no barrels are really connecting with him, which is why he's able to keep that ERA down to 1.14. Might walk guys here and there, so his whip is is not amazing, but it's good. Um, and, and really, it's about playing, like I said, this Cardinals team that has just swung and missed uh, at a really ridiculous rate. 30.31% whiff rate in his second highest in baseball. Um, that's not been any better over uh, since Ju- July started, basically, as they continue that rate of about 31%. And and just two weeks ago, less than two weeks ago, it was on July fourth. Uh, he, he Lazaro took on the Cardinals eight Ks in that one when he, where he got the win as well over the Cards. So we, look, the Cards have been much better. One four of their last five, I understand. Um, but this is just another opportunity. And and here's the other thing I would say: I do agree that there's the the opportunity for some of these hitters to see him a second time around, feel a little bit better about seeing his pitches. But that's just a few of the guys that I would... There's like three hitters right now on the Cardinals that I would say, you know, between Goldie and Arenado uh, and probably Gorman, like really outside of those three, them playing, uh, being able to, to sort of use the experience that they have against Lazardo, they're the ones that I'm most scared of. Uh, but other than that, like I think there's pretty solid opportunity for a, a number of these guys on the cards to continue swinging and missing in this game against the Marlins. So that is all the time I have for you today, though. Continue to follow along, like, and subscribe to that page. Coming back to you tomorrow on Tuesday with another one of these for you guys uh, as we'll look to keep this going. Like I said, 2-0, and up almost two units just after one show. Uh, hopefully, we'll, we'll probably go 2-1 and one at least in this one, feeling pretty good about it, with some, with some plus money in here as well and some odds uh, that, that I like. So until I see you next, happy betting.